In this video, we're going to retest the ARC A750 with the newest drivers and see if the performance improved or worsened. And it all starts now. So last month, Intel dropped their latest ARC GPU drivers. And along with the new drivers were claims that games run better and smoother. So today, we're going to test those claims and put the newest ARC A750 drivers to the test. For our methodology, we tested 30 games using their in-game benchmark tools on their highest settings on both 1920x1080p and 2560x1440p. Do take note that we did not use ray tracing and we only focused on average FPS, 1% lows, and frame times for the performance. And for our test bench, I used an i5-12400F mated to a B660 motherboard with 32 gigs of 3600MHz RAMs. Complete list of the parts used in this video will be down in the description. So let's start with a game that Intel claims to have the greatest leap in performance, CSGO. True enough, the newest drivers did produce better performance. On 1080p, the average FPS increased to as much as 25% while the 1% lows were up by 8%. And yes, I know what you're thinking. Those 1% lows are horrible. I used Oletical's FPS benchmark map to test CSGO and there's a certain scene on the test where you go inside smokes and it significantly lowers down the FPS as seen here. Hence, the 1% lows were dragged down as well. But you should expect 1% lows when playing on matchmaking at around 130 FPS on 1080p. Frame times were drastically improved as the newest drivers lowered the frame times by up to 90% translating to a much smoother gaming experience which the old drivers failed to deliver. 1440p followed the trend as the average FPS increased at around 23% while 1% lows were virtually identical and frame times were lowered by as much as 50%. Again, you should expect 1% lows to be better on matchmaking. On newer titles using DirectX 12 like Dying Light 2, the newest drivers also had massive improvements. We saw on 1080p that the FPS average improved by as much as 11%, while 1% lows had an increase of 19%. This translates to lesser stuttering in-game. However, the biggest gains were seen on frame times, as the newest drivers lowered frame times by as much as 28%. Performance gains were small at 1440p, as average FPS increased only by 6%, while 1% lows had an increase of 8%, and frame times were lowered by 40%. Rainbow Six Siege saw huge improvements in terms of stability. On 1080p, the newest drivers yielded 9% better FPS average, but 1% lows is where the newest drivers had a huge impact, 32% to be exact. This means that the game suffered from fewer frame spikes compared to the old driver and on games like Rainbow Six Siege, stability of frames is a huge deal. Frame times were also lowered by around 14%. The same improvements can be felt on 1440p as FPS averages were up by 12%, 1% lows were increased by 29%, and frame times were lowered by 21%. There are games where the latest drivers had little to zero effect, and one of them is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. From our test, the performance on the old drivers versus the latest drivers were virtually identical on both 1080p and 1440p. The same can be observed in Red Dead Redemption 2, where the newest drivers gave out very little gains, particularly on 1% lows and frame time, while the FPS averages were identical. Final Fantasy XIV also saw little gains from the driver update on both 1080p and 1440p. It's so little that we can claim this as a margin of error, meaning if I tested this for a couple more times, the results might be exactly similar. But if anything, these results indicate that not all games will benefit from the driver update, which is perfectly normal. F1 2022 saw small gains from the newest drivers. On 1080p, average FPS was up by 2%, while 1% lows were higher by 1.8%, and frame times were faster by 1.3%. Performance gains were slightly better on 1440p, as averages were up by 2.6%, 1% lows were up by 6.5%, 
and frame times were faster by 2.6%. Here is where results become weird. On Horizon Zero Dawn, the performance actually dropped when using the newest drivers. 1080p saw a drop of 8% on FPS average, 2% drop on 1% lows, and 30% increase on frame times. The same trend can be seen on 1440p. FPS average was down 9%, while 1% lows dropped 4%, and frame times increased by 35%. I tested this over and over just to check if it's some random error, and even got to the point where I used display driver uninstaller just to make sure that everything is wiped clean when I installed the drivers. But the results were consistent. Steve from Gamers Nexus also experienced this on other games, so I would chalk this up to instances where the driver fixed one issue and created another. Performance on Godfall also regressed. FPS average on 1080p was down 6%, while 1% lows was down 2%, and frame to frame was longer by 21%. Performance on 1440p was actually worse, as FPS average on the newest drivers were 15% lower, while 1% lows were down 16%, and frame times were slower by 20%. Again, just like what I did on Horizon Zero Dawn, I tested this over and over to see if the results would change, but the results were consistent. Hopefully, the developers would get wind of these and address this on future patches. Here's the summary of other games tested. To put it simply, the newest drivers had an overall positive impact on the FPS average on most games, while few titles enjoy double-digit increase in performance like Ghost Recon Breakpoint, World War Z, and Gears 5. 1% lows also yielded a net positive result with the newest drivers. However, games like Metro Exodus, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Cyberpunk 2077 did not show any improvement or deterioration of performance, which is perfectly fine. Frame times were also better with the newest drivers, as all games enjoyed lower frame times with Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Horizon Zero Dawn being the only exception. On the next set of games tested, only on Godfall did the newest drivers worsen the performance, while the rest of the games had better overall performance. However, I do need to mention that those 1-3% to performance increase can be considered as a margin of error during the test. Nonetheless, games with double-digit increase in performance is a clear evidence that the newest drivers improved the performance of the GPU. On 1440p, the improvements in performance continued, but more and more games are starting to see little to no improvements in this resolution. This is because on 1440p, most games are likely already GPU-bound even without the help of the newest drivers. We'll see massive gains only on games which were driver-bound by the old drivers. This can be observed in Modern Warfare 2, where you'll actually be prompted by the game to update to a newer version of the drivers when you play on version 3491, a clear indication that the old driver is not suitable for the game. Overall, the newest drivers had a net positive effect on the performance of the ARC A750. And when compared on averages in 1080p, version 4146 was 6.2% better in FPS averages, 9.4% better on 1% lows, and had 4% lower average frame times. The same trend followed on 1440p, where version 4146 had better performance overall. When compared with other GPUs, the ARC A750 outperformed the RX 6600 when using the newest drivers, which is pretty commendable considering that the previous driver had worse performance. To wrap everything up, the newest drivers did all of us a service by enhancing the performance of ARC GPUs, which indicates that Intel is heading towards the right direction in the GPU market. This will ultimately benefit us end users as market competition is always a good thing for consumers. On that note, we end this video. If you liked the video, show your support by liking it and consider subscribing to the channel. Peace!